Hi, my name is Steve Jaynes. This is the More Abundant Life Podcast, episode number 426. Try, prove, and test the revelations. I'm looking at the word revelations as messages, the verbal sayings, the teachings, the doctrines, and any other communication that's supposed to be from God. We are to try, to prove, to test, to see if those words are really words that God gave us. I'm going to teach on try, prove, and test revelations. When I think of the word revelations, revelations means the messages, the verbal sharings, the teachings, the doctrines, and any other communication that talks about the things of God. And in 1 John chapter 4, verse 1, it says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. Try. The reason for the, the title is you will try the words. We try the spirits. And when it says the spirits, it's talking about what the spirits produce. And what they produce is all kinds of things, but the most dangerous thing is the revelations, the words, the thoughts. That's why I say we're to try, improve, and test the revelations, the messages that are sent, the verbal sharings, the teachings, the doctrine. Doctrine means right believing and any other communication about the spiritual kingdoms. We need to try them and prove that they're true. Test them. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. That's the reason there's lots of false prophets going out into the world. Lots of ideas, imaginations, thinkings, and we got to test them and prove them. And we do that with the word. Let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 2 in verse 14. These things put in remembrance. And see, Paul is writing to Timothy. And Timothy was a leader in the Christian ministry at that time. And he's writing to them. He says, put these things that I've been teaching you in remembrance. And then it says, charge them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, scratch that word, but to the subverting of the hearers. That's how he starts off. Now, people think, well, Timothy is, is a leadership epistle and is written to leaders in the Christian church. But You notice they don't have a separate Bible for leaders. Everything's in the same Bible. You know what I mean? What's being written here is written both to leaders and the rest of the believers. And you'll see this as we go through here. But we we don't want to mess around with words to no profit, to the subverting of the hearers. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed of rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, this is true of both just the average believer, which is a great believer, by the way, or a leader in the Christian ministry. They both have to study. They they both are responsible to God to rightly divide the word. And I always think it's interesting that it's not one book for the leaders and another one. Everyone knows what everyone's supposed to be doing. And if you want to be a leader in the Christian ministry, then you read this and you take it to heed. You want to teach, like I'm a teacher, I want to teach accuracy of the Word. It's most important to me that I do that. Everything that I do is most important that it's accurate according to the word of God, just like every other believer by the way. Verse 16 says, but says, but shun profane and vain babylons, for they will increase 
unto more ungodliness. <laughs> That's why we want to speak the truth in love whenever we can. Their word will eat as does a canker or a gangrene. To whom is Homodules and Philetus, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrew the faith or believing of some. some. The faith means the right way of believing. See, if, at that day and time, there were doctrines, ideas, sharings, messages, like I was saying, that the resurrection is past already. In our day and time, we have our own things we have to check out. And it says they overthrew the right way of believing of some. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. <laughs> Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his, and every one that is named, that named the name of Christ, departeth from iniquity or injustice, is another translation. In other words, every believer wants to do that which is right. They hear the word of God, they study it, and they want to do what is right. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and of earth, some to honor and some to dishonor. But this could be really looked at as some of less honor. In a house, especially in the lands times of the Bible, they had precious containers made of gold and stuff. I mean, really. And they have others that are just made of pottery clay to last on. Some of those might be like what they would use to go to the bathroom. You still need it. it has its place, but less honor. Not the one you would serve people. You know what I mean? Things, that's, this is all this is really saying. Even like the rag that you keep near someplace where you can use it to clean up a mess in, on your car or in your car. There's a use for that rag. You see what I mean? We have little things around our car because we spill coffee all the time. But anyhow, it's not dishonor, it's less on. If a man therefore purge himself from these things, he, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet or right on yeah. for the master's use, mm -hmm. and prepared unto every good work. See, uh, the believer and the leader both have to do this. They, they go, oh, this is what the Word says, and they line up their lives with the Word. And they want to be meet or right on for the Master's use, for God's use, for Jesus Christ, who is the head of the church, use, prepared unto every good work. We're called to good works. And if you want to know what those good works are, ask God what your good work is. But you'll notice it if you get involved because you'll start doing stuff. And then it goes on to say, flee also youthful lust. That means impetuous, without much thought. Youthful lust, but follow righteousness, right way of living. Believe it. Charity, the love of God in the renewed mind. Peace with them that call upon the Lord out of a pure heart. With the others that call upon the Lord with a pure, pure heart, we have peace with. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strife. Sometimes people will get into these conversations that or maybe a good mental gymnastics and stuff, but have no real profit when it comes to rightly dividing the word. How many angels can dance on a head with that? <laughs> That's the most silliest one. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid knowing that they do gender strife. Let's say I believe that Goliath's armor bearer was a girl, and you guys don't. 
And so we have a big problem with that, right? For no purpose. Mm-hmm. They, it will just gender strife. We'll have a problem with each other. That's what it's talking about. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all. Hey, you want to be a, a, a servant of the Lord? We're gentle unto all. Apt to teach and patient. Now, he's writing to Timothy, a leader, who was these things. He is a teacher. He is gentle. He's apt to teach. In meekness, opposing those that oppose themselves. If God peradventure will give them recompense to the acknowledging of the truth. We just keep presenting the truth in front of people. If a person decides that they want to be a leader, then they have these scriptures to help them be a leader. In other words, I take these things very seriously. If I decide that I'm going to run a home fellowship, that's a big deal to God. And if I want to do that, then I take it as a big deal. I make sure that I study and what I teach is accurate. If I receive an abundant sharing, I do it honestly all the way through because you can't do these things haphazardly. If you want to do a service for God, you just go and do it. And you do it uprightly and honest as you can all the time. All the time. Not that anyone's perfect, but you know, you just do your best. Verse 26 says, that they may recover themselves out of the snare of who? The devil. the devil, who are taken captive by him, the devil, at his, the devil's will. That's why we keep speaking the word. We're gentle. We're apt to teach. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. Chapter 4, knowing this also, that they that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetousness, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. Man, in the world today, that's good. It's you should be disobedient to your parents. That's the teaching. Children first. Children, let them rule us. That's, but that's being disobedient to children. You know who should yeah. teach the children to be obedient? The parents. Hey, I'm your parent. That's why you do what I tell you to do. If you don't do that, the children will run you. Unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, Truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent fears, despises of those that are good. Oh man, I can't stand those people. They're too good. Traitors, heady, high minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Having the form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. For in this sort are uh, they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women or harmless women laden with sins. Because you know what? They hear about the sin, the sins of the neighbors, the sins of all around them. And then they are led away with divers lust because of the message, the sharings that they hear. Ever learning, this is one place none of us want to be. Ever learning and never able to come to a knowledge of the truth. Pretty wild. Always learning. I've gone to every fellowship. I know everything. But never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. There are people like that. Now as Janus and Jamborees withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth, men of corrupt minds, retrobates concerning the faith or the believing or the right way of believing. 
but they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifested unto all, as theirs also was. In my lifetime, since I've been in the Word, every so often there's a new doctrine, a new teacher, a new person. And man, we're so thankful that God sent this new one and brought this new light to us. But a little while later, they're not around. They're just not there anymore because their folly is manifested unto all. I have heard so many times, man, I'm so thankful that this guy came along to teach us this new thing, how to heal people better than it's ever been done before, how to minister better than it's ever been done before. But a few years later, where are they? Where are their teaching? Where's their teaching ministry? Unex you don't even see it. You don't even see it. Verse 10 says, but thou hast fully known my doctrine. Paul is saying, you know what I've done, my manner of life, my purpose, my believing, long suffering, love that I have, patience. And I've been around for a while, Paul's saying. At least that's what I think he's saying. Persecutions and afflictions which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lister, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men seduces shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. That's pretty wild. They, there's people that will deceive, but the reason they'll deceive is because they're being deceived. We have to try the word. We have to prove the word. We have to test it to make sure it's the word of God. And watch out for anything that's contrary to foundational stuff. Verse 14 says, But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned, and that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which is able to make thee wise unto salvation through the believing which is in Christ Jesus. And here's these verses that we've all heard, and that's why I said this book, these scriptures are written both to leader and to everyone else. All scripture is given by inspiration of God, or is God breathed out of the mouth of God, and is profitable for doctrine, which is right believing, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. Who's the man of God? Anyone who speaks in behalf of God. The man of God speaks for God. Someone says something that's contrary to God's word, and we say, no, that isn't quite right. God doesn't really bring sickness. Matter of fact, that comes from the devil. We can start to teach people. That's the man of God. The man of God. Who does it with patience, apt to teach all the things that we've been learning about. Chapter 4, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick, which means the eleven, and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine, right believing. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, mm -hmm. but after their own lust, they shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, looking for that new thing. 
looking for that new way of doing it. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned to fables or myths. But watch thou in all things, endure inflictions. In other words, hey, you know what? Life isn't always a bowl of cherries, but God always comes through. Endure it. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry, whatever it is. God has called everybody to good works. We all have something to do. For I am now ready to be offered, and my time of my departure is at hand. Paul knew that the end of his life was coming. He says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith the right way of believing. All of us need to think about, I want to be in the good fight. I don't want to be in second-rate fights. I want to be in the fight that matters. And the what fight that matters is the truth of God's word is made forth and known to others. That we, as men of God, speak God's word. We help people with the things of God. And we're going to finish our course, and we're going to keep the faith all the way to the end. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And we do this really by trying, proving, and test, testing the revelations, the messages, the verbal sharings, the teachings, the doctrines, and any other communication. And in verse 3, it says, for though we walk in the flesh, could we have to go, do we live in the flesh? We we, we have these fleshly bodies, right? Mm -hmm. We Even though we do that, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. You could look at the word as weapons, our tools. Our tools of our work, our good works, are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Strongholds are thoughts, reasonings, messages that we believe and held on for a while, but as we're hearing God's word, we find them not to be true. We pull those ones down and kick them to the side, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought, the word thought, thinkings, reasonings to the obedience of Christ. You know what? We're saved by grace, but we still need to be obedient. We need to be obedient to the thoughts that we hold in our minds. Do they line up with the word? When they do, then we are good for the use of the master. We're good to do our, our good works, which we're called to do. Let's read a little more. Verse 6, And having in a readiness to avenge all disobedience, as soon as we find that we're believing wrongly, we go, oh, we don't want to do that. Then when your obedience is fulfilled, do ye look on things after the outward appearance? No, we already know that God doesn't look at things at the outward appearance. God looks at what? Your heart. The heart. We want to be the same way. If any man trusts to himself that he is Christ, let him of himself think this again, that as he is Christ, even so are we Christ. Do you see what Paul's saying here? He says, you guys think that you're a Christ. Well, think again about it because we're a Christ. Are you lining up with us? Are you lining up with the word or are you after those new false teachings? 
the ones that I see every 10 years or so. Actually, they come every so often. Let's follow this new thing. I don't want to. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. It's not too far away. I don't want to start in verse 29. It says here, let the prophet speak two or three and the other judge. What it's saying here is in a fellowship, there may be more than one prophet, right? This is not talking about a word of prophecy here. It's talking about men of God who've got a gift ministry, right? As a prophet. And it says, speak two or three and let the other judge. For if anything be revealed to another that sitteth by, let the first hold his peace. So we're sitting here, and there's leaders, people who speak for God, prophets, and one has something to say, and someone else has something else to say. What you do is you hold your peace. For ye may all prophesy one by one, that all may learn and all may be comforted. I use this principle at the end of our fellowships when I say, does anyone have anything to share? And this is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for someone that has something to share more so that we can all learn and all be comforted. Verse 32 says, and the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. You know what that means? The prophet is in, in control of his spirit, his Holy Spirit. And so he can easily say, say on. He can just as easily say, hey, I've got something to share. Wait, you just stay where you are. I'm sharing tonight. Don't interrupt my teaching. You know why? Because the spirits are subject to the prophets. When you see the scope of God's word, others can share and everyone can learn and grow. So that's why I do that. I do that because I want everyone to learn and grow. And you can't just, a person can't go, you know what? I just got this revelation. I got it. I know something about one of your lives. And I'm going to tell you what it is right now in front of the group, okay? Well, you just do it. Someone here is uh, committing adultery, and I know you. God told me. Who's in charge of that spirit? Well, I know one thing for sure. God would never tell anyone about anything about your life without telling you first. Just wouldn't do it that way. He would never do anything to embarrass you. But people do these type of things all the time, thinking they're spiritual. Verse 33 is, is a great key on this. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. God is not the God author of confusion. He would never do something like that. Let's go down to verse 37. If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of God. If any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. He doesn't want to know the word, doesn't want to change, doesn't just let him be that way. There's nothing else you can do any of them. 39, therefore, brethren, cover it to prophesy and forbid not to speak with tongue. Let everything be done decently and in order. Every fellowship should be run decently and in order. A way a fellowship is run decently and in order is by the person who's running the fellowship. The person that runs the fellowship keeps it decently and in order. He doesn't let it get out of control. They plan it and watch over. 
because that's what someone does. Like I say, I run a fellowship. I make sure that it's decently in an order, that it's not out of bounds. It's not crazy in any way. Everything that we do, that I do, I try to do according to the Word of God. Now look at verse 26. How is it then, brethren, when ye come together, you come together, every one of you has a psalm, has a doctrine, has a tongue, has a revelation, has an interpretation. It's almost like what I was sharing. Has a message. Got a sharing. Got a teaching, a doctrine, or anything else. We got to prove these things. And then it says, let all things be done unto edify. Everything has to be done to edify. That God gets the glory. We are a listener-supported podcast. I want to thank those who generously give so that we can keep the podcast available. The podcast is heard around the world for all those who would want to know how to accurately understand the Bible when they read. The episode is complete. So head over to stevejanes.com. If you're interested in learning how to read the Bible, there's also an audio class and companion books available on how to read the Bible for understanding and power. The website has audio teachings and biblical studies books all there to help you grow in God's grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Listen next week for another reading of God's wonderful, matchless word.